go onto the shoulders of Christian House representing Rafa Condashar. Now, as we're heading on to 22 kilometres to go. You can just see the, the back of the peloton there, really strung out, uh, and riders riding a lot lower in, on the front end of their bikes, which is signs that, that the bunch is starting to, to pick up pace. You're right there, Rob. And, uh, in fact, there are the leaders. They've capitulated, they're sitting up, and they know that uh, their job has been done today. It's been fruitful for two. That uh, means that two of the riders that were away, i.e., on the front, uh, Christian House, he's going to get the jersey for King of the Mountains. And the other man that went back a little earlier, and that, of course, is Ronnie Matias, will get the Yodel Sprints jersey. Well, it looks like the man from Anpos, Sean Kelly, is going to continue here. He's not going to give up. He wants to stay out in the lead. This is the Belgian, and this is uh, Whiting. I can't see that succeeding, though. The field are just going to pull him back, aren't they? They, they will do, but and I'm pretty sure he's aware of that. He could possibly be hoping that uh, two or three riders will go across to him, but that's highly unlikely, and it doesn't look like that's happening. Uh, but again, he's out there. He's just showing his jersey off again, and uh, you know, quite possibly he's at the end of his contract, and uh, at the moment he hasn't got a contract for next year, and so the more he can do to show uh, his aggression and uh, the way that he can ride, then, then the more chance he's got of, of, of being seen by uh, not only the, the uh, directors that are here on the race, but those looking, uh, watching on the TV and looking at the results um, for on the, on the continent. Just to get the Sky team on the left now. What a sight this is then, Bob. I mean, they're all lined out there now, aren't they? Beginning to uh, raise the tempo. We've got one right at the back. I think he's either been for some bottles, but no doubt he'll thread his way up through the wheels and join them. And Jeremy. they are showing a five-second advantage for the lone leader. Well, a strange style of riding. You see quite a lot of that uh, these days with the hands just resting on the bars. I always make a criticism because if you were to hit a uh, hole in the road, you'd go over the top. You can. When, when you're riding on your own like, like this, it's not too bad because uh, he's got full vision of what's coming. But the riders who do it a little bit further back, uh, it can really affect you. Here you can see the, the riders in Jura racing, as we mentioned earlier really starting to pile the pressure on now. Uh, it's a little bit open and the, the chances are there's um, a crosswind coming, and uh, which is why they're all riding in the left-hand gutter. The, the wind will be coming across from those open fields there on the right-hand side as we see a crash now. Well, crash, yep. Yeah. I think what happened there, the grass verges are quite high. And, uh, well, there we are on the floor. It's one of the riders from uh, the Node 4 Giordano team. That is Rico Rogers there, their sprinter. The little sprinter from New Zealand. Well, I think what you might happen is, as the field fill the full width of the road, with the verges being high on the right, you could just catch a pedal and down you go. Yeah, you can. We just see, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the jersey go up in the air, and it's probably a touch of wheels. Someone's brakes, and oh. there he goes straight up. <laughs> Gymnastic movement almost. <laughs> Fortunately, four, it was grassy, points. wasn't it? Yeah, four <laughs> points for effort. And then as the peloton swung over to avoid, you can see uh, the repercussions of that. Where riders on the left were being forced off the road as well. Well, this is the trouble. You go down like uh, a deck of cards, don't you, here? And uh, when all the riders are fighting for position, there's not a lot of room between the riders, and one go down, and that's it. But this, is, this highlights the importance of why these riders do what they're doing now. That's quite a chase in front of them, isn't it? One rider has waited for Rico Rogers, and the pressure is being applied, so that's going to be a hard chase. It really will, and it's the sort of effort that you can do without. I mean, we've seen it before with um, uh, Robbie McEwen, for instance, in the Tour de France. He crashed very late on, uh, crashed or punctured, and then had, a, had to ride himself back onto the bunch, got himself there, and took the victory. Uh, so the, the adrenaline can come through. But here, another crash yet again on the left-hand side of the bunch. Oh, my word. Uh, we were expecting. Well, we yep. said there could possibly be crashes, but I expected it to be on the lead-in on these bends, but not not this far out from the finish. Let's have a look at this one then, Rob. See if we can tidy it up. See who's on the floor. Narrow bridge pinch yep. point. Yep. They're getting twitchy as well, aren't they? Now as the pressure is being applied. Right, one of the young riders from the Great Britain team at the back there. I think that was uh, Owen Duell actually. But uh, Endura are obviously deciding it's time for them to uh, put some pressure on. Look at that. Yep, there was two separate crashes, actually. That one, that one the happened Soleil, a little bit after. The, this, this was the first crash here on this pinch point. And you can see there aren't many of the bigger teams here. There's one of the uh, Garmin Sharp riders the on Gal. the right. Yeah. There's a lot uh, been delayed here. And Porsche Sean Kelly as well. He's really gone down, hasn't he? There we go, yeah. 